Hi folks, I uh, hope this is okay to you today. Uh, it's good to be with you. And we're looking at a public lecture on the various lives of Jesus that have been done by academics over the centuries. And uh, that's what we're looking at in this uh, short lecture. Uh, one of the first names um, in research from an academic point of view was Herman Ramirez in 1694 to 1768. He saw that Jesus uh, was a people's uh, leader and um, basically that he didn't get to do what he wanted to do. He failed in his mission. And that's why he had uh, the whole stamp of uh, failure written uh, in his ministry. Um, Jesus' uh, disciples were ambitious and um, they made up the story that he was a supernatural person. The conclusion here is that Christianity is a fake and um, basically that the system really had deism behind it. And one of the problems with Ramirez is there wasn't a very good historical criteria and Schweizer uh, pointed this out. Then, after Herman Ramirez, there was um, a development of rationalism. This generally sentimentalized Jesus as a great teacher. Um, this made Jesus look exactly like the rationalist in um, getting Jesus to teach truths that they accepted. Um, rationalism didn't look at Jesus from a historical perspective but more of a universal teacher of truths. Uh, the rationalists saw miracles could be ex uh, explained rationally. The cures were just um, various things that Jesus carried in a medicine bag. For example, Jesus took along a few jars of wine to Canaan in order to sort out the issue of running out of wine. The Essenes are the ones that helped Jesus uh, to be released. He did not die. The problem with rationalism is it lacked a historical foundation. Then you had from rationalism liberalism. David Strauss was the main guy here and he was influenced by Hegelian philosophy. And that posited a supernatural thesis and a rationalism antithesis and you bring it together and you have a synthesis which is a myth. The supernatural um, is allowed but not as history but basically as myth. Because Strauss used a Galian methodology it obscured his understanding of the historical sources. And that meant for Strauss that the synoptics were just a collection of tales uh, like in any historical content or background. Liberalism then went on to develop with Ernest Renan who attempted to get behind the theology of the church and the dogma to the more historical Christ. But in reality Renan, crea Renan created a sentimental Jesus of Galilee, a romantic ideal. There was a growing acceptance that liberal ideals the liberal ideas um, basically the achievements of humanity of that particular period was basically reflected in the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus, uh, Renan says, did he remember the clear fountain of Galilee where he was wont to refresh himself, the vine of the fig tree under which he had reposed, the young maidens who perhaps have consented to love him? Did he curse the hard destiny which had denied him the joys conceded to all others? Did he regret his too lofty nature and the victim of his greatness? Did he mourn that he had not remained a simple artisan of Nazareth? End of quote. He writes, there remains only the incomparable hero of the passion, the founder of the rights of the free conscience and the complete model which all suffering souls would contemplate in order to fortify and console them. So you see here, what you see is a romantic view of Jesus by Rainer. 
Then we go on into the 20th century. Some key books that were published in uh, 1901 was Wilhelm Reed's The Messianic Secret of the Gospels. It was a critical work and, uh, but, and also historically unreliable. Albert Schweizer, Schweizer wrote A Sketch of the Life of Jesus, a historical eschatological. The Gospels were written at a level of historical reliability. Uh, however, Jesus thought uh, in his doctrinal ideas. Sorry. Um, Albert Schweitzer's sketch of the life of Jesus was historical eschatological. And he saw that the Gospels had some historical reliability. Albert Schweitzer wrote The Quest for the Historical Jesus, 1911. And he basically critique the liberal lives of Jesus and it's an excellent book if you want to look at the history of historical Jesus studies. However, there was this confrontation between Reed and Schweizer. Reed uh, came out on top. He saw the Gospels were historical and theological fiction. Reed thought that history of the early church was read into the life of Jesus. And so this idea discredited the history of the Gospels and was continued by Martin Diabolus and Rudolf Bultmann. Bultmann used his form of criticism, which basically tried to get behind what the church was saying about Jesus and get to the more historical bare knuckles and basically saw Jesus as a kind of mythological figure. One of the things about this history of historical Jesus studies is there was so much material to work through. Second thing that comes to mind in all this study is where does faith and knowledge meet and history? Okay. So we're just going to look at some of the big hitters in historical Jesus studies. Uh, first of all, Dominic Crossan in the historical Jesus, the life of a Mediterranean Jewish peasant. N.T. Wright says, Dominic Crossan is one of the most brilliant, energized, learned and quick-witted New Testament scholars alive today. Uh, the methodology of cross, crossing triple triad process, uh, page 28. Uh, Macrocosmic, he looks at the cross cultural analysis of the time of Jesus, the social anthropology of the time of Jesus, the social systems of the time of Jesus. And he Wright says that crossing um, creates a too easy proposal of the peasant class. But he does open the study to further study of the social sciences for the first century. Mesocosmic Hellenistic Greco Roman history shows that textual literary problems lead into literature dealing with Jesus, for example, Josephus, Cicero, and other data. Microcosmic literature concerning Jesus, right questions, crossings, dating of sources, it is not a starting point but the conclusion. Uh, Crossan looks at the historical categories and divides them into the broken empire, Roman world of master-slave, patron-client relationship, embattled empire, Palestinian world of first century, and the brokerless empire, Jesus' own agenda and ministry. What you have to note about Dominic Crossan is he says that Nazareth was not an obscure village in Galilee, but was in a very cosmopolitan heavily traveled area, influenced by politics and culture of Rome. Jesus identified with the peasant class. Cross and Call uh, does not accept the canonical text and extra canonical text of first century. He does his own digging. Cross and reconstructs the historical Jesus based on the historical period of first century Palestine. He does not impose 20th century philosophical ideals. 
the Jewish war of AD 66 to 70 is supremely important for him as he reads from the fall of Jerusalem backwards into the time of Jesus into the social life of Jesus the religious life the political life etc etc Crossan gives information on the historical Jesus as follows he, he regards Jesus as an influential peasant who worked among the poor he was a miracle worker he was supported by open healing open eating open come mensuality he notes the symbolic action led to the arrest of the execution he believed Jesus was a fully fledged uh, Jewish scenic he wanted to bring contact with people into the presence of God Jesus uh, arranged his ministry under the auspice of the symbols of magic and meal magic equals miracles done by the wrong person meal associated with wrong people and then finally Jesus uh, the people of Jesus didn't know why he died So that's uh, Dominic Crossan. Um, I think there's more to it as well. I think that uh, he went on to develop uh, the idea of Jesus as a, in Sinaitic philosophy. This came also from F. Gerald Downey. Um, the Sinaitics adhere to um, formal structures uh, very loosely and thus has been difficult to define they had a viewpoint the viewpoint uh, understanding these people were uh, it was society they saw society is corrupt and worthless people need to reevaluate reevaluate their lives property and attitudes and separate from society they were threadbare and uh, had a cloak and a bag and a staff they have longer uh, they begged and they tried to live with nature Um, Jesus was a, he saw Dominic Cross and saw Jesus as a cyanic and if he was he was less Jewish because there were no cyanic Jews the problem is a critique by N.T. Wright says there is no connection between Jesus and the cyanics as we look at uh, Dominic Crossan's uh, understanding of Jesus is that uh, there are divergent views of Jesus and the sorry in the in the flow of historical studies of Jesus there are divergent views which the scholars say are perfectly valid but which I say are, are not scholars uh, through this period saw Thomas Christianity as reflecting a, a skepticism Pauline Christianity saw how Jesus died Q Christianity no interested in Jesus death and resurrection I don't believe in the Q by the way exegetical Christianity interested in the historical Jesus entry rights uh, model uh, Jesus and the victory of God N.T. Wright is a pretty big hitter in New Testament studies especially in the area of uh, historical Jesus studies that goes without question Wright does not want to admit that history and theology cannot work together he believes that there is an objective basis for holding both together he notes that the underlying argument for his book is that it's split in is not warranted that rigorous history open-ended investigation of actual events in first century Palestine and rigorous theology open-ended in investigation of the Word of God 
that has the adjective divine might actually refer belong together and never more so than in discussion of Jesus. Also, there has been an acceptance of the value of historical research, but much of the present reaches have resulted in negative results. Wright is more positive in the results of historical study. Based on the work of Kenneth E. Bailey, 1991, Wright argues that synoptic stories have a basic historical truth controlled and ensured to be accurate to the community. Divergence are followed for material that is irrelevant to the identity of that community, page 134-136. Summary of Jesus' life, page 147-150. Born in 4 BC, grew up in Galilee in Nazareth near the city of Sepphoris. Spoke Aramaic, some Hebrew and Greek. Emergence as a public figure around 20 AD, uh, with John the Baptist emerging before him. He summoned people to repentance and announced the kingdom of God in, using parables. He went to Galilee, uh, did cures, exorcism, and table fellowship.
Okay, folks, we're going to continue to finish this off. I'm sorry about that. It just went uh, funny for a second there. Uh, so sorry about that. So we looked at teaching, uh, preaching ministry of Jesus in page 594 in the victory of God. Jesus and the victory of God by N.T. Wright. It's a massive word, by the way. And what we looked at there is uh, Jesus didn't expect the universe to end. As far as anti rights are concerned, um, that there was no desire for military uh, revolution, and uh, he envisioned the building of the. He did not envision the rebuilding of the temple. So what did what was the uh, the things that Jesus did? Well, he came to announce the end of the age. He wanted a development of the people of God, but nothing to do with the temple. Uh, he felt that his suffering and exile would bring in the new people of God. Uh, Jesus wanted to take on the life of Israel upon himself. The destiny of Israel was seen in him. He felt that he could not do it any other way but by the cross, page 595. Some of the key Old Testament passages that N.T. Wright explores are Daniel 7, where you have promises, Zechariah 9 and 14, where there is suffering and the royal shepherd, Psalm 22, 110 and 118, the suffering and vindication, Isaiah 40, 45, redemption. And uh, these passages show that redemption, suffering, would bring the defeat of evil. N.T. Wright says in page 609, Through his work, Yahweh would defeat evil, bring the kingdom to earth, and enable Israel to become, after all, the light of the world. Through his work, Yahweh would that he was not just a god, but God. Page 609. Jesus believed that with his death there would be the radical defeat of evil, page 611. N.T. Wright then goes on um, that Jesus saw himself in the line of the great prophets, page 168. We are here, historically speaking, on certain ground. Uh, parables were told us many times in many different ways and had historical veracity. The Beatitudes were told a number of times. There was an urgency in Jesus' message and there was an invitation to Israel for renewal in covenant, restoration in creation, liberation in Israel, uh, the return of God. In page 477 of N.T. Wright's book, Jesus, uh, the prophetic ministry of Jesus was seen in the return from exile, evil has been defeated, and Yahweh coming to Zion. Page 477, N.T. Wright says, Jesus saw himself as the leader and focal point of the true returning from exile Israel. He was king through whose work Yahweh was restoring his people he was the Messiah. And then in conclusion, we have Jesus' uh, development in his actions of ministry. He cleansed the temple as a way of judgment and seeking authority over the temple, um, which exercised his claim in Zechariah 9 verse 9. The entry was a symbolic action. And he writes, says in page 490, Jesus' action in the temple constitutes the most obvious act of messianic paraxis within the gospel narratives. Page 49, King had an ultimate authority in the temple. Jesus' temple action was a claim to royal status. Page 494. 
Then we have the Passover meal, which was a symbolic Exodus, page 559 of N.T. Wright's book. The Last Supper meal symbolizes a new Exodus, page 559. The supper that Jesus had was the reenactment and taking over the symbolic understanding of the Exodus. And finally, the crucifixion. Jesus understood his messianic mission in his crucifixion, as played out in Psalm 110 and Daniel 7. Jesus was passing judgment on Caiaphas and the apostate Israel. The blasphemy came from the accusation of blasphemy came to Jesus because he rejected Cephas' prophetic word regarding the destruction of the temple. Jesus pleads guilty and this is seen as some kind of royal status alongside God. What Jesus did at the cross was seen as to take over of what the temple should have been doing. This is a uh, anti White's work. So let me finish. We basically looked at Ramirez and the rationalism and liberalism, two aspects of liberalism, David Frederick Strauss and Ernest Rayner. We looked at the 20th century, looking at Reed and Schweizer, and we looked at some conclusions of that kind of scholarship. Then we looked at two major scholars or major players today, Dominic Crossan and N.T. Wright. I don't agree with these scholars, but what I'm giving you is some understanding of the academic history uh, up to our present time. There is much, much more that can be said. There are many, many other scholars that need to be put into this. But this is just a little introduction for you on this topic, and I hope it's been a blessing. God bless you.